Um, so as Seth said, uh, I was a field service engineer, so uh, coming up with the, the user persona uh, for this was rather easy for me, um, so having been one myself and understanding the pain that uh, our field engineers go through on a daily basis. Um, so uh, quickly, I'll, I'll go through the uh, the agenda. I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, what the project scope was in the background and how we integrated uh, the SharePoint solution with uh, Microsoft Fast and uh, SmartLogic Semaphore and to some extent the BA Insight uh, preview component. Talk a little bit about the solution architecture, um, uh, the workflows, and, and, and the work that went into the information architecture was quite extensive. Um, to, to model new publication process flows, especially for our company, and then talk a little bit about the taxonomy metadata and our content object model. And if I have time, I'll talk about what's next for us. So a brief description of applied materials and the uh, business problem we have. So applied materials makes a semiconductor equipment, uh, display equipment, solar equipment. Um, basically, our, our equipment is used in every Intel fab, every um, Samsung uh, display manufacturer, every uh, solar panel uh, manufacturer, they use our tools to create the actual um, devices. Uh, we have products installed at, at sites all over the globe, and we support field service technicians uh, at those sites. So our, our field service engineers are, are usually assigned to one site or two sites um, globally, and we have to maintain the, the knowledge and information flow to those guys out there in the field. Um, we really needed a, a solution that would help us manage not just the content authoring process, but also allow our end users to uh, social tag and, and do the formal tagging from the authoring side, and also our uh, field engineers' productivity had to exceed our customer expectations because they're there in the fab working with the customer, so we expect that they would be, uh, uh, you know, in, in the know of what's going on and have the best information available to them. They're really our frontline uh, access to our customers. We also have an interesting challenge with customer and internal IP, uh, particularly with customer IP. If we have a group of people who work at an Intel site and a group of people who work at an AMD site, obviously certain information cannot be shared between those two, so we have to ensure that we're protecting our customers' IP so that it isn't shared even within our own company to uh, some of our other customers. Our, our solution that we needed uh, really needed to be able to dynamically deliver content because we have so many different products and so many different business segments and essentially every single one of our tools is nearly a one-off uh, application. So these hundreds of tools, you know, the content is very dynamic and, and uh, very uh, configurable. So just a quick overview of the technology, uh, you know, we, we this is a classic cycle, you know, publish, tag, um, search, but really what we were trying to do was solve the search problem, um, but you can't just solve that without addressing some of the other things, and, and we had some other business reasons to update this, this, the rest of the business process, but it, the indexing, the assembly, and the consumption of that information was really our primary goal for our use cases and, and really drove all of our requirements back to the uh, publishing groups and our uh, experience. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the search experience. Um, aside from a just standard search uh, results that would go down the front of the page, we actually created these sort of semantic views of information. So for every part number, we would have a search experience. For every uh, product that we sell, we have a specific search experience. And the one I'm going to show you here is the search uh, for part number experience. And you can see we start with a standard template. We get an image from a digital asset management system that, that is, is particular for this part number. We also get some details out of our uh, SAP or PLM system or ERP system about that part, uh, descriptions that can be edited in a collaborative manner. We have uh, some informal content contributions, such as being able to upload uh, additional documents about this part or uh, uploading images, and these are open to any user to be able to upload content. We also have a structured uh, data coming in from uh, our SAP system that will show you for this particular part number, you know, what's the current global inventory, what's the annual consumption. 
uh, this is very important information. It's, it's not a search per se, but it is a part of an integration in a search-based application. Here we have relevant information, which is highly structured, being pulled into a page that's primarily uh, aimed at returning document search results. And you know what's interesting, Eric, you say that's not search per se, but it really is that, that information aggregation, which since it's keyed off a part, you could think of it as search in one way, but it's information access and it's, it's seamless. You know, it, it, you, you start off with a search and it's just aggregating that piece of information as part of that overall experience. But not search exactly, but it's search-like in a way. Yeah. And, and the users are completely unaware. Um, the search exactly. engine particularly doesn't go after those numbers, but right. it's well, yeah. integration. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's one application keying off the other, and it might not be the search engine, but it's that aggregation piece. So, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, in the in the standard uh, bottom part of these pages, we have all of the, the document results and the, the discussion forum results, and everything has on the left the refinement panel, and this is very important that we wanted, since we were aggregating so many different sources, not just documents in SharePoint, but documents, uh, uh, for example, Lotus Notes, we, we absolutely had to bring in some of our 35 some thousand Lotus Notes databases, and we wanted to make sure that they were all classified and, and aggregated with the same metadata. And that really was only possible using the, the Semaphore tool to read that and use the exact same metadata for every single facet that we had defined. Uh, one thing that we do is, at, for our search results, we are able to showcase the most important events. If we have new um, service bulletins or safety notices that pop out, we do push those up to the top of the page so that people see those right away when they're looking at this part number. We have this other section over to the side. Uh, and this, this taxonomy, the, the pro related products and related parts, um, basically takes you to these products, this experience for those other parts, and it keys that off of the search results. Uh, unlike the refiners, which are just helping you filter search results, these are actually links to the other semantic experiences you could be having. You'll notice that, that this uh, search tab is actually just one of the many tabs, and we have more coming, I'm sure. Um, we additionally have a media tab for images. So now we're getting any images that have been tagged with this part number, and, and soon to be adding uh, videos. Uh, related parts, this taps into our uh, system, integ uh, system integration with our uh, PLM system, where we can look at the parent parts of this part, the child parts, you know, the whole bomb structure of this system or of this part number. And we have a discussion thread. So anybody can open a discussion thread about this part or, or continue and respond to discussion threads. Um, and these are all coming from the SharePoint uh, uh, architecture. But we've tagged them explicitly with this part number and the users. And they can have the full-on discussions. And just a, a, a note of definition, BOM being bill of materials for ah, yes. those who are not familiar with that term. Yes, uh, that is an industry term for us. <laughs> uh, right, exactly. Uh, one of the things we added, we, we do have a lot of customers in, in Taiwan and in China, and uh, a lot of these customers, or e even sometimes in the US, have really poor bandwidth. And we have some of these documents, which could be a schematic drawing or something like that, with very large file size. And it could take a long time to download. So we installed this preview component uh, by um, uh, by BA Insight, and what it does is it just takes a, a lightweight XML rendering, and instead of when you click on the document having to download the whole thing, it takes you basically to the, to the exact page that's most relevant to you. It actually has is, is, been very valuable for us, uh, in, in especially in the fabs that are overseas. And every document, of course, has all its properties. But you can administer uh, collaborative features through the properties of the documents, allowing people to Add more metadata, um, add more metadata, edit properties, upload and replace those kind of things. We also have a ratings and feedback system for every document, so you can do the the typical SharePoint stars system or the thumbs up, thumbs down. But we also have feedback, which is viewable to everybody, because a lot of times we don't get uh, have time to go back and and 
fix something that was written in, in 1987, even though the document's still relevant, the, the field, the end users sometimes make the corrections in these, in these feedback areas. So our overall solution architecture is rather large, but I think the, the key takeaway here is, you know, we have the, the formal content authoring here on the left. Um, we built the use cases and the workflow for that content authoring. We have the publication process, and that's where the auto classification kicks in and determines uh, what kind of document it is, does uh, some serious taxonomy and metadata work on the document, and then we publish it out. Um, the collaborative, collaborative environment, this is where stuff can be uploaded by the end users. It's a little bit more social. There's a lot more features that can be handled and a little bit less strict about what they can upload doesn't have to follow a defined process, but there is a lot of social um, uh, things going on in there. And then, of course, our system integration. This is where we connect to all other systems and bring in some of that uh, very structured data in, in, our, in our search experience. And finally, over here on the left, a very small portion, as you can see, when you compare by uh, architecture size, is our user experience. It's, uh, you know, uh, based on the SharePoint 2010 platform with Fast uh, for SharePoint and SmartLogic and a little bit of VA, in, VA Insight. So the formal authoring process um, that our uh, engineers go through when, they, when we release a new product is very, very uh, standard stuff. You know, uh, there's a revision cycle, the approval cycle, that's all handled in SharePoint and we didn't see much need to go outside of the standard SharePoint workflows for that. We did a lot of work, and this was very important on content analysis and modeling, coming up with the, the design, and, and Early and Associates helped out tremendously with this, and, and really with all of this, um, of this process, uh, helping us to figure out what was the best design for our content types, uh, what kind of metadata we needed, and we basically boiled it into three sections, uh, administrative, security, and descriptive. Uh, most of the stuff descriptive, we, we kind of already had a good idea of what we needed. Um, administrative is pretty standard stuff, but uh, security access control is extraordinarily ex important in our company and, and how we would uh, make that happen. The publication process, again, Early Associates helped us develop this. Um, it's quite an eye chart. I apologize for that. There's really nothing more than you would expect with some standard review cycles and approval cycles. Uh, requesting and, and all of the standard uh, content creation and content consumption processes. It's, it's uh, nothing spectacular there. So the tagging part is basically between uh, publication and getting put into the search experience. It's auto-classified, validated, put into the right bucket in SharePoint, and that's how it becomes exposed to search. And everything in uh, in SharePoint, we can adjust the taxonomy because uh, the documents are tagged. Those tags are held within SharePoint. If the auto classifier um, is off a little bit, we can change it. Or if something isn't in there yet, we can get it added and, and update it later. Uh, but this is just a quick view of kind of what the taxonomy looks like in ZTest format and then what it looks like when you're dealing with it in SharePoint. Very easy to use, very, uh, very easy for our users to learn how to use that. And some of our individual facets that we use for navigation are, are listed here. So in summary, you know, when we went through this process, uh, Early Associates helped us very early on to define the roadmap. Uh, we actually came up with a nice three-year roadmap based on a lot of user inputs, um, both from uh, interviews and, and things like that. But then also we did some, some broad-reaching uh, surveys to our, to our end users. And, and the, the information came back pretty much what we knew and how we uh, should approach it. Uh, we went through design for quite some time, figuring out what was the best the design that we wanted to um, build out of FAST and what were the needs of our users in that, uh, in that uh, those part views and product views and, and what information was really important to them. And that's really how we finally arrived at our, at our search-based application. Really, uh, the feedback has been tremendous. Uh, Qualitative studies have shown 46% you know, uh, reduction in the amount of time it takes to find information in the company uh, for these guys, and uh, 
from a from a company perspective, I think a lot of groups other than the field service organization are looking at this and saying, "Wow, we really, you know, could use this and really want to jump in now and put their content um, in the same application." So, Eric, you, did you? What was the percentage reduction in um, in t time to locate information? Uh, in the studies that we did, you know, we didn't we didn't have any any uh, true measurable data from our systems before. But we did a qualitative, uh, I'm sorry, a quantitative side-by-side -side comparison twice, actually, um, because people didn't believe the first numbers. But the, the over 100 users, uh, you know, basically we came back and we were showing 46% reduction. 46% reduction. And people didn't believe it at first, so you did it over again and said, yeah. wow. And how much did you do to figure out how much, what that translated into in terms of uh, dollars, if you did the math or projected dollars? Uh, so we have about 2,500 field uh, engineers, and I I, could, I wouldn't do the math uh, publicly, but um, I'm sure you can see that. Uh, for, well, and I can't. How, how much? Keep, how much even, of their time? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, they were they were so they were spending probably 10 to 20 percent of their time looking for information. 10 to 20 percent. Okay, and you so you dropped that by by half. So what, by whatever half. that was, so it became. Yeah. So you reduced it by uh, five to ten percent, and uh, ten percent of the time uh, for twenty six hundred people at a forty hour week. That's a lot of. That's four hours per week. That's ten thousand hours per week. That's a ridiculous amount of time. I mean, <laughs> the numbers are astronomical when you start breaking it down, right? Yes, yes. But you know, those are those are again, you know, very very data driven side by side comparison. So it's really tough to say that. That, that was um, the actual savings. I think it, it right. has just been released, and probably in the next year we'll get um, uh, another survey out there and get their opinion on how much it really has saved them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it, but even in in the most conservative estimate, it seems like a very large amount. That's great. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. there, there's certainly. no doubt. Everyone from the CFO to the to the CIO has has really got behind this and endorsed it as a as a big hit for the company. And that's pretty much it for me.